Hello everyone out there in internet land. That's a bit weird. <laughs> um, my name's Jazz and I am here with Lou on the Timely Facebook page. This is very exciting. Hi Lou. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, so good. So good that I'm here with you today. Oh, stop. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm I'm well. I'm in lockdown, as are you, and as is New Zealand now, which is so intense. It's so intense. Yeah, I know. Hello to all our um, friends. Give mm, us a wave. Um, hey, we're coming from Zoom through to Facebook. Uh, how are we looking? Are we are we looking good over there, Lou? Yep, we are. We're live. We're perfect. Everyone's there, and anyone that's tuning in. Give us a wee um, hello and let us know where you're tuning in from because we love to hear who we have got from around the world. Yeah, let us know. I'm coming in from Sydney, which is on Gadigal land. If you happen to know where you are in Australia, that's awesome. Shoot that through as well. Um, a lot of us are in lockdown. And if you're not in lockdown, don't rub it in. Um, <laughs> so today, we should get into this. We should definitely get into this. Um, today, I'm doing with uh, Lou, a live consultation. And this is something that I do with all of my new clients when they come into my brow studio. And I think consultations are really important and we shouldn't underestimate them. So I did a, a consultation form with Timely, which is really fun. And it's a full list of all the questions I've, I ask my clients and you'll be available, it'll be available to you to download. And if you're a timely client already, you'll be able to go into your timely consultation form section and use it, edit it, do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to go through this consultation form and Lou's already actually filled it out. And I'm not just going to ask her the questions. I'm going to explain to you guys why I asked those questions and I guess you could kind of say the psychology behind the questions, but not so much the psychology, but just what I'm trying to learn about that client that maybe they don't even realize I'm trying to learn. Um, so we're, yeah, we're all in lockdown and I just wanted to do a massive shout out to all the peeps in New Zealand. It's a really tough time right now. Um, Lou, I mean, you guys have gone into extended lockdown. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. So we have until the 2nd of September over here in Victoria. Um, and I feel like I was, I was talking with some of the people from Timely about this last week. We've got a lot of um, Timely folk that are in New Zealand and my family is all in New Zealand as well. Mm. And I think um, for everyone over there, it's that, you know, I, well, Victoria, we just hit our 200th day of lockdown, which is a bit of an icky milestone. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about how for those in lockdown in New Zealand, um, I feel like there's been this hesitation to be like, oh no, we're in lockdown. We're talking to us in Victoria or New South Wales. But really, it, it, it always hits you different when you haven't been in it for a long time. And it's that, you know, I'm sure you went through it in New South Wales, that whole getting used to a new routine and it's just everything's shaken up and it feels a bit um, full on. So definitely thoughts go out to all of those in New Zealand at the moment because it is, um, it is a, it's a strange thing to navigate your way through. So we are here with you mm. um, and we will get through this. But yeah, really excited yeah. to be here with Jazz today because um, as I'm sure you all have started to get to know jazz is just the biggest ball of sunshine so if you need anyone to make you feel better it's jazz so you're at the right place <laughs> oh my god look at my head just literally getting fatter <laughs> oh my god I'm such a dag um I yeah it's full on it's a really crazy time the you know what the only thing I'll say from a, like a business point of view through lockdown just quickly is just don't make any rash decisions. Mm. I remember first lockdown in Sydney, a few businesses, they kind of freaked. They made some really concrete decisions around staffing and then they couldn't come back from that. And we, we some people are making concrete decisions around finances and you can't come back from those as well. And so I just think just give it a week or two. Don't make, if you've got the money, to kind of get you through the first couple of weeks, just sit on that money, wait and just see what comes your way. Because yeah, you, like in Australia, we had a couple of different options in terms of financial assistance, but if you got one, you couldn't get the other and it really screwed a few people mm. over. 
know if I can use that word on timely. Um, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, uh, I guess I don't know. Do people? I I don't know if people know who I am. I'm a I, artist here in Sydney. I was just going to say, Jez, please. I know that you. Um, I feel like you're very modest and humble, but we need to we need to share how great you are to all of our audience. So please <laughs> give us give us the down low. <laughs> I, I so I it's so weird. I've been doing you know this, Lou. I've been doing the timely Facebook live sessions once a month for the past few months and I've been in like I was really lucky to interview like Ray Morris and Penny Anchoir and some awesome peeps um and I don't really like yakking about what I do and who I am um but here we are so I'm a brow artist based in Sydney I specialize in just brows I've been doing I've been working for myself for 11 years as a specialty brow artist my salon doesn't offer anything else other than brow shaping, which is really weird, but it works for me. And so I've had 11 years of only doing eyebrows like day in and day out. So I feel like I'm kind of getting to a stage in my life where I'm like, yeah, and I think I know what I'm doing now. Um, when I'm not doing brows in my Sydney salon, I'm doing education and I'm teaching other people to do what I do, which is a little bit of what today is about because I think so much of our industry is suffering and I, I don't know how to help. I wish I could help so many salons who are struggling. So I just thought maybe some free education and some things to give to our industry would maybe help a few people out. And I've been with Timely for like, I think it's six years. I've been an ambassador with you guys for five years. And I've done like commercials with you guys and eBooks. And I've like hung out with you at beauty expos around Australia and New Zealand. And now I'm doing these timely education things. Like it's just crazy. It's a very I know. Weird. It's wild that it's five years that we have had this flourishing relationship <laughs> together. Yeah. It's, it's so, so good. So good. It's been, I love timely and I, I love what you guys are doing for the industry of beauty and hair through lockdown. I really think aligning as a business owner, aligning yourself with companies who have really stepped up through this time to help out businesses, because I think it really shows a lot of awesomeness on your behalf. So I think we should get into this. Um, where, just before we do, because I'm going to do a live consult and ask you questions about your brows, and I'm going to highlight why I ask those questions. Mm -hmm. How do people, if you're a timely client right now, how do we find the consultation form? Oh, yeah, cool. So yeah. I will take all of you through a wee demo on um, where to find Jazz's expert consultation form in Timely. Now, um, I will very shortly take you through a, a short demo of that. But just for those that um, might be new to online consultations, to really strip things back to basic, what we're talking about is a digital form. So rather than having clients come in and fill out the con you know consent forms whatever it might be um, on paper we're talking about doing this digitally so through timely you are able to create customized forms and it could be for anything at all it could be for checking people's health for doing a full brow consult as we're doing today um, for doing covid you know covid check pre-appointment, whatever it might be. Um, that you can create through Timely's consult app or, or in Timely itself. Um, and then you can automatically send that to your clients before their appointment, which is what Jazz, the fabulous Jazz, has already done to me. She texts it through to me over the weekend. Um, and then once they've filled that out, so once I filled that out, it automatically uploads back to um, Jazz's Timely account under my profile. So let's get into that wee demo. I will share my screen here. Let me know that that is all coming through nice and pink. Perfect. So pink. Cool. So we're good. Online consultation. So we'll jump straight into what this looks like inside mm -hmm. Timely. Awesome. So in Timely, um, if we go into consult under setup, we'll go have a look at Jazz's expert form under the expert tab. Jump into that one and make any adjustments that you would like to. So when we use that template, we'll get the option to edit, adjust, um, make any changes. 
And then once we're happy with that, we save that template and that now becomes one of our own custom templates. So we'll find that under our custom tab, perfect. Next, we'll go and set this up so that it is sent to customers automatically when they book in for a brow service. So we create a new rule. From there, we choose which template, so Jazz's brow consultation, and I'm going to set this up so that it is sent to all new customers that book in for a brow shaping, so that my customers are only sent it the first time they book with me. If we would like to see that customers have completed this, we jump into our customers tab, click on the documents, and in there, it's super easy to see which consultations have been filled out and to see all of the details that um, our clients have answered. Awesome. Woohoo. So that is um, that is my little piece about how to use it internally and find that form. And now I'm going to hand over for Jack to Jazz and we are going to awesome. run. So timely. I'm double. There we go. We're going to run through our, um, our consultation today. So fab. And also you can you can edit this so that your company's logo is on there, which is important. So it'll be my questions and you can edit and remove and add in whatever you want to your own consult form. And then it'll be your business logo that goes on top, not mine. Um, so it'll be so fab for all of your clients, because I think when I do education sessions at Beauty Expo and when I travel around to see people, when I do eyebrows, I have an hour. I know that sounds crazy, but I have one hour with my clients and I charge accordingly. But a lot of salons, they don't have that time. And it, you can't just go, well, we're going to start doing one hour brows and charging hundreds of dollars. Like, So how do we find a way to get the information we need from clients quickly without like compromising communication and the time that we have with them? Because literally... When we're in a salon, they walk in the door, they get on the bed, we do their brows, they walk out. And that's all the time you guys often have. Consultation forms are going to change that for you because it's about getting all the information you need like that. You read it over, the client walks in the door and you're already 10 minutes ahead in your consultation. So today when I ask Lou these questions, it is going to take us longer than you would normally spend. However, what I want you to get from today is why I'm asking these questions because there's a background thought process to all of these questions. They're not just face value. Um, and that's what I'm really hoping you'll learn from this today because one of the hardest things I find with clients is sometimes I don't know how to communicate what they want. And if we don't properly understand what they're looking for, the end result is them not being happy at the end of this and not feeling heard, which is not ideal. So we want to feel heard and I might have 10 or 15 minutes to consult with my clients, but you guys don't have that. So this is what this is going to slow. It's going to compact that whole thing for you. Lou went through and answered some questions. So Straight off the bat, one I always like asking people how they found out about us because it helps me to understand, obviously, marketing and where people are finding me. My two top places where people find me are Instagram and through a friend, and probably through a friend is first. Although it takes longer, word, word of mouth is always nine times out of ten the strongest marketing, and those clients are the clients that stay with me for the longest time when their friends are recommended. So how long have you been shaping? Like, when was the last time you had your brow shape, Lou? Well, it was a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so do they feel messy at the moment or do they not? They feel pretty, pretty good. No, they feel, they feel pretty good. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel okay. like for the, for the first few weeks, I feel relatively happy with my brows usually. And you're yeah. not tweezing them in that time? No tweezing. No, I am too nervous. Too okay. nervous. <laughs> Stay <All> away. Right. <laughs> if Lou had turned around to me and said, um, yeah, it's been two weeks and they just feel so messy. I know I've got a client who is, is probably tweezing at home on a regular basis, which is fine, but they could be making mistakes. And so that right there tells me straight away that they are probably in the mirror analyzing their face on a regular basis and so I have to be conscious of that um, 
How long has it been since you last tweezed your brows at home? She never does. So that's great. I often will back that question up with a, a little cheeky thing like, oh, do you ever just like tweeze one or two? Do you ever just tweeze one or two, Lou? I mean, never ever. Or I can ever find the tweezers in the house. <laughs> I maybe would go and have a little, you know, take one or two out from like, there have been times where I might take yeah. one or two out from underneath. Yeah. So what I'm getting from Lou is she's pretty chill about her brows. She's not too conscious of them looking a little bit furry between visits. Whereas someone who's tweezing on a regular basis is very conscious about how they look. Um, she's getting her brows shaped every six weeks or so. That tells me in the back of my mind that she's got a fairly average hair growth. They're not growing super quickly, but they're not growing slow, which means if she's not tweezing on a regular basis, but she's getting her brows done every six weeks, if we wanted to regrow her brow, there is absolutely room to do that because her brows are continually growing. If she said she's getting her brows done once every three or six months and she never tweezes her brow, and we want that brow to grow back in, I'm going to have my work cut out for me. It probably won't grow back. Or if it does, it's going to take years, not months. So that's why I'm asking those questions. Scroll down a little bit for me, Lou. So we did. I did ask Lou about the makeup she's using, but that's a question for another day. But it's good for you to know if clients are using makeup so that if you have retail, you know it's something they're interested in and it's something you can sell to them. Um, Always, we have to know what someone's skin is doing. It's so important. I am not just looking after Lou's brows. I'm looking after her skin. And if I make a mistake with her skin, she's not going to come back and see me. I find it really amazing that so many clients come to see me and they are still so shocked by the volume of questions I ask about their skincare. Um, Lou, did you know that if you're using a super strong retinol vitamin a and it's not being used correctly if i wax your skin i can take skin off oh no i yeah. did not yeah and oh. that is like the number of brides i've met who don't know that people going to special events even if you're threading if someone's using super intense skin care and it's not prescribed correctly and they're using a really high percentage too quickly I can do damage with wax. And so we're going in and asking all these questions so that I don't do that, so that I can look after your skin, not just your brow. Mm. Um, now, there was that, yeah, down the bottom there. If you, um, you've had, when you've had waxing done, Lou, you get little breakouts of pimples. Where do you get those? Yes, I do. So occasionally when I've had waxing, I have come home and on the following few days, I will just get these little mm -hmm. pimples on the top sides of my brow very close to the brow um yeah and that has been something that I have had um like quite a few times after having wax mm. waxes on my brows. right okay so it happens a lot okay so do you have any events coming up in the next seven days in lockdown honestly I wish I could tell you yes but other than zoom which we yeah. learned about fabulous filters no, <laughs> no. so I'm no all I'm right, fine. so you don't have anything coming up. Look, there's a couple of ways we can play this. We could wax your brows today because we're mm -hmm. in the same state and all. Um, we could wax your brows today above and below and we could see if you reacted to my product. Right. Or what we can do is wax underneath and tweeze the top line and just tweeze the dark hair and leave the blonde fluffies. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see what that does. Based on the fact that you're telling me that every time you get waxing done up there, you're breaking out every time, I have a feeling your skin is trying to tell us to stop doing it. Right. So I, I think we should just tweeze personally. Yeah. Does the blonde fluffies, do they annoy you or you don't even see them when you? Um, I've actually never um, thought about the option of not having that wax because it's just always been done mm. like every time I've gone somewhere that's just what they that's just what they do but I personally have never um I've never felt like that gets very overgrown mm. up there so no I think I'd, I'd be safe to say that they don't those little ones they don't really irritate me up there yeah okay all right so what we can do is over a few sessions I could wax today and see how you react 
I could just tweeze today the dark hair and then see how that reacts. If you had an event coming up in the next seven days, I would absolutely only tweeze. I wouldn't even give you mm. the option. Yeah. Um, if you were someone that had lots of blonde fluff and you were like, it annoys me to no end, mm. I would probably say as long as you don't have an event, we could try waxing, um, but uh, I wouldn't be super keen because, as I said, your skin's trying to tell us it doesn't enjoy being waxed up here. Mm. Um, and so we just we just shouldn't do it. But look, everyone's very different. And I mean, I'm, I'm providing answers to that question based on other people, not just yourself. I definitely would not go into that much information if you were someone else. Okay, scroll down for me. I do want to say on that question as well, it actually makes me feel so um, seen to have you read my answers and really dive into what is going to happen for me when I step out of your step out of the salon today, step out of the clinic. And the fact that you're taking into account what might be coming up for me, what's it, you know, that that there, this process is what really I think uh, makes me feel quite valued. And like I'm not just the the client before or the client, like the client after. I'm right here myself, Lou, and you are my <laughs> the best brow brow artist ever. So I think that there's real value in what you've just taken us through there. Yeah. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, I think it's really important because. Your clients walk out the door and they're wearing your work for the next easily four weeks. You want to make sure it's looking fab. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, people really get sad when their skin looks like when you get pimples. It's really just oh, mm. boring. Okay. So I, now you don't have to answer, like use all these questions, guys. You can edit some of these out. Some of the questions I've included in this consult form kind of even moderately double up, but I've done that so that if you one question appeals to you more than the other, you can just shift out and use what you like. So, okay, why do you, why did you want to see a brow specialist? Who do who do you normally see for brows? So I usually just go to um, whoever is close to me. Um, now that, so yeah, I, I've never been to a brow specialist and I've always just, sometimes it'll be just, you know, I'm walking in as I'm going past. Um, and so I, every time I go in, they'll say, okay, what would you like to, what would you like us to do today? And I'll go, I don't know, just whatever you think. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like yeah. just make them look better, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I would really, really love to be able to, um, explain to people what I would like because I know what is going to suit my face and I would also I have a few wee things that I get irritated at they're mm -hmm. quite thin in the middle and quite far apart mm -hmm. um and I really love when they look a little bit bolder not super crazy bold but just a bit bolder a bit maybe more fluffy um rather than that really thin really really pristine groomed line I'm yep, a, a fan of some of my wee um celeb brows that you can see on my consult there consultation okay all right so it, there's a you've written something here really interestingly which is not something that I would this is not a phrase I use and this is why I love this because it's about helping us find out like our like connective brow language, like yes. what we both resonate with, right? So you've said here the inner sides in particular. Mm -hmm. When you refer to the inner sides, what are you talking about? Can you point to the area you mean? These parts. The inner sides. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right cool. yeah. All right. So that, yeah. All right. Because I call that the front. I don't call that the inner. Mm. And it doesn't mean that what you're saying is wrong. It's just how you communicate. Totally. So a little bit of difference. Um, I love the images you've given me. And I think, I asked you to kind of put a few images in because one of the big things that comes through when I'm working with new clients, they show me photos and it will be five different people with different backgrounds and different brows. But the catch is you've got to find the, the continuity between each of those brows. So in this case, we've got Kendall Jenner, who has an Armenian background. We've got uh, Cara Delevingne, mm -hmm. who has a European background, I think. I and think. the chick from that amazing show. What's that show? That amazing show. I actually forget so, the one about chess, but yeah. I am so sorry. I have lost okay. what her actual name is, but I just love these three ladies' brows. Yes. <laughs> so you've got three different cultural backgrounds, three different, like, 
the shape, like maybe Kendall's and Kara's are a little bit similar, but the bottom brow is not, not similar at all. But like in terms of shape, mm -hmm. but that's also because she's probably raising her brow a little bit. And there's a little bit of curve. Mm. But what is similar between all three of them is, is that they all have a bold, natural finish. And so it's a little bit model editorial, Lou. Yeah? Um, yeah. So what that tells me is you're not looking for crisp, super schmick lines. Mm. You want a softness to the brow, but still a little bit of definition. And so how I'm going to create something like that is I am, I'm going to, you know, sort of wax underneath, but I'm going to try and hold on to like a millimeter of hair just at that baseline. Mm -hmm. And that little bit of extra fluff is going to help just make them fluff up a little bit and be a little bit more natural. They're still going to be groomed, but they're just not going to be sharp. Sharp is not wrong. It's just not what Lou wants. And so yeah. I have to work with what she's looking for particularly because she gets her breakouts on the top line, the fact that she's looking for a brow like this is kind of a bonus because it means long-term if we choose to never touch her top line, it sits right in line with what she's looking for. So such a bonus. A couple of things I noticed about Lou's brow when I first look at her is, yep, the fronts are a little bit sparse and her tails are sparser than the front which is normal that's not abnormal we just want to make sure that they never get sparser or thinner because as we get older our brows get thinner and sparser and we want to make sure we have as much brow hair coming into our older age much 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 older age don't worry Lou <laughs> as we can because we're not just shaping brows for today we have to make sure that what we do for someone lasts them throughout their life because unlike makeup if I tweeze your brow, I'm permanently damaging follicles and mm -hmm. those follicles need to last you when you're old and you can't see and you can't pencil them in, right? Mm. So we have to, this is why consultation is so important. So just quickly, because I think we're going to run out of time because I'm Captain Have a Chat here. Lou, just look straight into the camera for me. Yeah, perfect. Hello, how's that? So when I look at Lou's face, if you look sort of straight onto her, she's got... I would say her chin kind of like tucks in just a little bit more compared to her cheekbone and eyebrow bone. So if you look at me, so we're both looking straight at the camera. For those of you playing at home, you can see that my cheekbone and jawline sit ever so slightly wider than my brow bone. Whereas Lou is the other way around. She, she tucks in really beautifully through here and her widest points sit about there. We don't want to make her too wide through here by flattening her brow out because that will just make this, this third of her face really obvious. Like it'll just pull it out too far this right. We, we do want a little bit of lift and that's naturally what her brow is doing. Mm -hmm. So brows have this amazing ability to create continuity but also counteract features at the same time. And so I think in terms of your shape, Lou, I love it. I don't want to change it. I want to keep yeah. that little bit of lift. Yeah. I love that your tails are lifting and kind of coming out this way and not wrapping around your eye. Okay. The major okay. changes I want to um, work on over time with your brow is making sure this never gets wider. Yes. If it never grows in, I don't care. Okay. That sentence, if it never blah, I don't care, is mm. really important. Yeah. Because if you tell someone they've got something wrong with their face and it never corrects, they will walk through life thinking they're not pretty. Yeah. You can't do that to people. And genuinely, Lou, if this never grows in, it doesn't matter. And hearing from, I feel like, an expert that is, you know, they when I hear that from you, I go, oh, okay, I don't need to care about that. Because if you don't care about it and you're the one that would care about it, being this is your profession, eh, Mm. you know water yeah. products back no worries good but really yeah. yeah yeah it's really important because I think we there is so much information out there about brows right now and everyone's being taught that if their brow isn't absolutely perfect that there is something wrong with their face which is why people are going to such extremes with making their brows perfect and some of those extreme measures are not reversible like permanent tattooing so with your brow, I would love this to get fuller, but if it doesn't, I don't mind. 
I'm going to show you some ways to fill it in and tint it Woo-hoo. to give it the illusion that it's a bit fuller. But remember, the front of your brow isn't perfect. It's not meant to be a perfect square. It's meant to be this beautiful, soft fuzziness mm. that graduates into density. Love Your tails, I want to make sure they never get thinner yes. and I don't want them to get any sparser. So we're going to tread really carefully around this section through here when we're tweezing and waxing and hold on to whatever fluff we can to help fluff them up a little bit. Um, okay, we've got probably five minutes left. So... Um, I did ask you about trimming. I Look, trimming is one of those things. There are brow artists who love trimming and there are brow artists who absolutely will never, ever do it. I'm a really big fan of um, what does my client want. So do you find, Lou, that your brows fall down and get really long and annoying or no? Nah, they just stay where they are? No, they stay quite, um, they really go sideways. Okay. The hairs. Right. So yeah. they're never falling down. Not falling down, no. Okay. no. All right. If Lou said that they were falling down, I might be inclined to further go into what that looks like and maybe consider trimming. But mm-hmm. I would also ask Lou, has she ever had her brows trimmed before by someone else? Mm-hmm. Learning from the mistakes of other people that someone has been to see will save you a lot of heartache. So find out if someone's ever done anything to your brow or to their brow that they didn't like. Mm -hmm. and then don't repeat it Mm -hmm. um okay you've said here that you liked it when someone made the inner part of your brow look thicker we've kind of gone over that already i'm going to show you some ways to achieve that at home that are really simple and you and i together are going to work on making sure that that gets thicker over time um okay what else is left Do you have concerns about seeing someone new? That's a really important question. It takes a lot of courage for someone to walk in your door and actively let them touch, like for me to touch someone's face and they, for one hour, they're with me and they can't see a single thing that I'm doing. And they just have to hope that at the end, I give them a mirror and it's amazing. (laughs) So take the time to acknowledge any anxieties or stuff running through them. Because you know what? If you don't, you energetically, you'll actually feel it. And sometimes just getting it out in the open just helps to like shift that and move it on. Um, Okay. Are there any more questions after that? That is us. That is us. Yes. There's so much more I could talk about. Like, I actually, I noticed in that I did ask if you had any special events or weddings coming up because, you know, that's, it's that future behavior yeah. that we're trying to get on top of as well. Yeah, exactly. And everything that we've just been through, um, for all of you watching, you can go and play around with these questions, turn them into your own tone of voice, but it's that base um, that Jazz has so generous, generously provided um, all of us with to be able to take people through a similar process to what we've just done today. And the thing that I wanted to mention as well is the way that Jazz and I have done this today virtually through Zoom, we're actually in complete different states, but it has been, you know, we've really been able to do this in a, in a very similar way to if we were in person. And so for all of those um, that are interested in doing the virtual consultations, they're super easy to do through Timely. You can use um, video services. And so when you use a video service, you would, let's say, label it as a virtual consultation and your clients could book online with you as they would for any other service. Um, And instead of them coming physically in to see you, you would have a Zoom link or a Google Hangouts or whatever it is that the video um, service that you're using, you would have that link added to their booking in their calendar and then do the same process that Jazz and I have. Send them that form, text it through, they fill it out, you you run through it together because you can see it, they can see it. Um, So that is really handy in the time that we are currently in, if that's something you're sort of wanting to to do with some of your clients. I think, do you know what? I actually didn't know that was something you were doing. So here we are. I'm being educated. I love that. Um, I, if I'm in lockdown till the end of October, which is a very real possibility, if not longer, um, I actually think that would be so fun to do consults with people and teach them about their brows online yeah, yeah. i didn't realize timely we were offering that it's wicked 
I'll take you. I'll take you for a little demo through. But yes, it is absolutely something that is there for you to use. And I did want to also, last thing from me was sh um, share a link so that you can send yourself a form if you are not currently using uh, Timely Consult. So I will just quickly pop that one there into the comments for you all. Um, this one here that I'm going to share, um, you can go to, oh, has that link? Yep, there we go. So if you click that link in the comments, um, it'll take you to a page where you'll see send yourself, there's a wee button called send yourself a form. And that will show you what it's like to experience um, it from the client's perspective. So from my perspective today, when I received that form from Jazz, I opened that um, as a text on my phone, clicked the link. All I had to do was put my phone number in and I was able to fill that form out digitally, upload photos from my camera roll or whatever it was. It can be really nice to have a play around to see what your client would be moving through if you do use this, if you do choose to use these um, in your business. Mm. Ooh. I love the consultation forms are such a time saver. I think they're really important for businesses that don't have the kind of time that I have, a consult form is just going to change your life, I think. And Jazz's consultation form is going to change your life. So, <laughs> so no, that Jazz, thank you so much for like, I think everything that um, you have taken us through, it just shows the importance of taking that time to run through something like a consultation to get on the same language, whether it's brow language, hair language, skin language, um, whichever one it is, mm -hmm. using consultations as your tool to be able to communicate effectively together. So thank you so much for Thanks taking for having me through, me through this today. It's been awesome. We should cool. do this again. This was fab. Yeah, I think we should definitely go live. I mean, I'll have to check my diary. I'm really busy for the next couple <laughs> of months, but like I can make time. <laughs> you, you're the best. Thanks for having me, Timely. Oh, of course. And I just wanted to um, say to anyone, if you've got any questions at all for Jazz, please pop them into the comments. There was one that came through, which is just a fun wee question, Jazz, for you. And it was about, do you personally thread or wax your brows? Oh, such a great question. I personally tweeze my eyebrows. Um, in the quickest answer I can give you, because I know people have got lots to do today, there are three types of hair removal, well, four if you include shaving, tweezing, waxing, threading, and shaving. Mm -hmm. Shaving is the most gentle, but technically it's not hair removal because you're not removing the follicle, mm -hmm. you're just shaving the top off, right? Tweezing is the most gentle way to remove hair from your face and your body without putting a lot of pressure on your skin. Threading and waxing both require a lot of tension on the skin to make sure you don't bruise and tear skin. So I just tweeze my brows. However, there are some women out there who can grow brow hair like it's going out of fashion. It is a special talent they have. It's listed on their LinkedIn page. And for those women, waxing and tweezing is... Um, Waxing or threading, I think, would be very important because that's a lot of tweezing and it could probably yes. be a little bit painful. Yes. Okay, love. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think that is a wrap. Any final things from you, Jazz? Um, just if you have, guys, if you have questions about the consultation um, form that I did, shoot me a message on Instagram or Facebook. I'm Jazz Pampling Brow Artist or Jazz Brow Artist on Instagram or go to the Timely People and you can directly message them and they can answer your questions as well. Um, I really love educating in the beauty industry and so I would just love to help anyone who's just struggling through at this time. Thank you so much, Jazz. You are amazing. And thank you everyone for tuning mm -hmm. in. We will see you soon, I'm sure. Bye. So long, farewell. <laughs>